into any price at lower edges. The floor needs to be supportive, so the floor needs to be going higher as well. So we can see that this is not a great uh, buy trade at the moment. It's gone too far too fast. So you can see that the original buy trade was the right trade. Of course it was the right trade because the ceiling was rising. Uh, the ceiling was rising against that lower level, but obviously we just have to be careful, work our way into that trade. And obviously our trade is about getting edges. Now if this price drops, and the floor decides to support us, then we'll start bidding back into the uh, the break below the 900s again here. We'll start looking to bid into the break below the 900s. I've just got a business, bit of business there. We've made ourselves another $150, $200, $245, $275, $300, Boom! $500, $600 on a two lot here now. $600 on a two lot, guys. Doesn't get much better than that little buy, does it? My goodness, that was fast. That was kind of rapid. So we just bought there, made ourselves another six hundred dollars. You can see that that's taken us up to just under uh, ten thousand dollars profit. I've just shouted it. There it is. There we just got a small trade on, and we just took it up to nine thousand six hundred eighty-seven dollars. Pretty good. We only got a two lot on, guys. We only got a two lot on, and it spiked beautifully in our favour. So we are bidding floors. We are bidding against that rising floor just now, right? So we're bidding against a rising floor. So we bought the 90s. It's now trading 30s. That's a 40 tick higher price. Now, obviously, I'm trying to bid floors. And obviously, at the moment, that's not what's working for us. But we've just taken another quick two lot into that trade. And uh, we've made ourselves another couple of hundred dollars profit. Nine fifty is now traded, guys. Nine fifty. Remember, we bought eight nineties. We bought eight nineties, and it's now fifty nine fifties traded. So that's just given us another quick profit into the trade. You can see that's has taken us over ten thousand dollars. That's has taken over ten thousand dollars now, guys. And that's relatively reasonable, isn't it? Right there, relatively reasonable. See, with the ceiling rising, the only trade is adding liquidity into the bid. And that's exactly what we've done. Now, there's a bit of a problem brewing, isn't there? You can see that the ceiling is no longer rising behind this. Oh, well, it's starting to rise again on the down tick here. So that's good news. That might start giving us an opportunity to bid the low prices again. But we need the floor to support this drop. Okay, we need the floor to support this drop. And then when it does, we start bidding into this really aggressively and start whacking in some orders. So we're waiting for the red line to flatten out a little bit. We certainly need the blue line to flatten out. Otherwise, you're going to be buying on a down tick, which is never a bad idea, which is never a good idea, sorry, as a market maker. You want to try and add some liquidity on the uptick. So we're just waiting for that floor to become a little bit more supportive. And it's not just a tick change there. It's got to be supportive, guys. It's got to make sure it's going in completely the opposite direction. The blue line has to be outperforming the red line. I've just bought some 907s. We've just traded some 907s there on the long side. We saw that flattening out. Now, I bought some equities there. And uh, we've taken a quick $200 profit out of that. Make some more money. We're taking some more money, and we're taking some more money. Okay, so that's us up to a total profit now of $10,582. Slowly, slowly, squeaky monkey. See that we've got another chance to do a little bit more adding of liquidity back down into the tens here. Uh, back into the 10s, it's already just traded up to the 30s, and I never get filled on any of my buys there. So we'll get ready to go again, guys. 30s, down into the 20s, down into the 10s, waiting for the floor to flatten out. We'll start looking for the bid on the uptick. And we'll see if the, uh, with the ceiling improving, I'm just letting it drop down, 15s. 
Let's see how far it wants to drop. We ended up with a price of 19s on that trade. It's trading 25s just now. I'm booking some monies. There it is, 30 traded. 30 traded. I like what I'm seeing, $600. Taking some monies. 40s traded. 40s traded now, 45 traded, 48 here now, traded at 48 here, 45s traded, 43s, taking some more monies, 49s traded, 51s traded here now, at 51 traded, 57, 60s traded, 60s here now, trading on the uptick here, 60s traded guys in the Dow Jones, 63 here, traded at the moment, uh, we've gone uh, offered at 55s, and I'll look for another opportunity to step in, so we've just taken that trade, off the uh, lower prices, and we've just gone up to $11,400. And we're only taking fives here, guys. We're taking a maximum of five positions here. And we're up to $11,400 profit on those market make positions. It's not a bad little trade, is it? It's not a bad way to make a living. And, uh, you know, obviously just uh, building into these liquidity storylines as it goes. Anyway, little break from that. Let's see if we've had any nice option trades. You can see that there's not been an awful lot in the last uh, four or five minutes. So you always just make sure you scroll back through to make sure you haven't missed anything. Scroll back through, make sure you haven't missed anything coming in late. Now, obviously, there's an awful lot here because we haven't, uh, we haven't uh, selected the kind of markets that we're looking for. But if you want to select the markets, all you go into is at the top edge here, and when it goes into asset classes, you can obviously work out which markets you do want to know all about. You might say, I want to know about crude oil. I want to know about crude oil. I want to know about uh, perhaps some uh, some s and I want to know about some Russell. I want to know some NASDAQ. Um, I want to know some Dow Jones. Interest rates, of course. We want to know about U.S. Treasury market metals. We maybe want to know about some, uh, some, some precious metals, trades, real estate. Does, do we want to know about the weather? I know Kim likes her temperature uh, longs, uh, so uh, she, she's always long the temperature gauge. So that's it. And uh, from those asset groups, obviously what you do is you just uh, simply uh, then uh, go into those assets and apply them. And that gives you crude oil, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, Russell, S&P, U.S. Treasuries, and precious metals. And it just takes away maybe some of the noise. It takes away some of the noise on those trades. And simply now what you're looking for is just the trades that what you, you know, you're interested in from this point onwards. You can't subdivide these further except for size to take off some of the, uh, some of the noise that you're getting on the screens. Makes some sense, absolutely.